So the RNET3 network went in uh, in around 2003-2004 and we typically see year-on-year -year growth of traffic volumes of 50%. So firstly we needed to, to upgrade the capacity, uh, otherwise we were going to see congestion which we try to avoid at all costs. Secondly, add in some private connectivity services for our, for our customers and then thirdly a bunch of back-end improvements to add new tools and processes and, uh, and abilities to, to make the network just work better for ourselves and our customers. The difference between RNET3 and RNET4 are fairly wide ranging. The, the IP routed network has been upgraded from Juniper M320 routers to Juniper MX series routers which are capable of and are running 100 gigabits per second. That's carried over the top of our optical network so the Cisco optical gear is now capable of running 100 gig circuits and in the future two or 400 gig as well. And then finally, the way, the way that we deliver services out to our customer sites has changed. So instead of a full-blown router and CPE server, a customer premise server, we now use a very simple NTU, a network terminating unit, a, a switch that just takes up one rack unit at the customer site. The services that we run, uh, the, the standard RNET routed access service, that is what we've always run and we'll continue to, to use that as our, our flagship service. So that's giving routed access to other RNET customers, the research and education community internationally and the commodity internet. But in addition to that with RNET4, we now have private connectivity services. So point to point layer two, we're extending for instance a data center to a cloud provider or a multi-point layer two or multi-point layer three services for inter campus connectivity or to connect a number of different sites together across our backbone. There are various applications that these network services can enable for customers. So an example of that might be a school who's taking up a hosted off-site uh, backup service, a point-to-point -point layer 2 service that is extended to anywhere nationally on our backbone can enable that school to, to ship their, their backups off-site. Or another very popular one is connectivity to Amazon, so the AWS, Amazon Web Services Direct Connect service, we can deliver anything up to 10 gig or beyond from a university campus to the, the Amazon infrastructure in Equinix in Sydney. In recent years, uh, research has been increasingly about big data and so for Australian research to be able to share and collaborate both nationally and internationally, the RNET4 network is intended to give them the tools and the capacities and the capabilities to do so in the short term and in the long term.